Hello YouTube and welcome to Synthetic Oil Info. My name is Tom Brown and in this video I want to talk about one of the current issues that's mostly affecting some of our older vehicles uh, and people who own them and work on them uh, and that has to do with flat tappet camshaft and lifter lubrication. Uh, for most of you driving newer vehicles now this is not an issue but if you happen to have an older vehicle that has a flat tappet camshaft and by that I mean a uh, if you go back to your earlier engines uh, that had non roller lifter uh, style camshafts so that meant that there was a, uh, a, a either a solid or a hydraulic lifter uh, that was rubbing right on the camshaft lobe uh, to actuate the valve train of your engine uh, most of these engines that have these flat tappet camshafts were uh, built, oh, probably, you know, prior to the 1990s. Um, so if you go back into the 80s and earlier engines, uh, the vast majority of those have hydraulic flat tappet camshafts. Some of your very high performance uh, engines back in this period, back especially back in the late 60s, uh, had solid lifter flat tappet camshafts, uh, but both of them, whether it's a solid lifter or a hydraulic lifter, um, it, if they are a flat tappet camshaft, um, and you can do a quick search on YouTube videos here, just type in flat tappet camshaft uh, animation, uh, and there'll be a whole bunch of different videos that pop up that show you an animation of what a flat tappet camshaft looks like. Uh, but basically you have a uh, camshaft that's running inside of your engine that has lobes or ears on that camshaft uh, that look uh, oblong in shape. And then those oblong lobes have a lifter that runs right on, on that lobe. And that as that lobe moves up and down, uh, as the camshaft rotates, uh, th that pushes that lifter. And there's a metal-to-metal contact point right where the lobe in the of the camshaft and the flat tappet lifter make contact and that is a very high friction uh, contact area and the oils that were designed to be used in these engines back in the you know the 50s 60s 70s and 80s had a lot of zinc and phosphorus in them to protect and provide a lubrication barrier there for that metal to metal uh, contact uh, point. Uh, well, one of the problems is that uh, when we started adding catalytic converters to our engines back in the mid-1970s, they had to start reducing some of that uh, zinc and phosphorus, uh, especially the phosphorus, because phosphorus will contaminate uh, a catalytic converter and greatly shorten its life. Uh, the, the converter will simply stop uh, performing the, the, the catalytic reaction inside of it uh, and then you have to replace your converter. So the oil companies were forced to um, stop using uh, as much zinc and phosphorus and so now a lot of your new oils don't contain very much zinc or phosphorus at all. And so that's where we get into a problem where you have uh, a new oil, uh, let's say you have an APISN oil uh, that is designed for your, your newest cars out here right now. Uh, and it says it's backwards compatible uh, with all previous API S uh, category oils. Well, technically it is, but if you get back into some of these older cars, especially the high performance models that have got, uh, you know, um, high pressure valve springs in them. Uh, so maybe you do racing with this engine or maybe it was a high performance car from the factory. A lot of those cars had uh, a solid lifter camshaft in it. So you have a solid lifter flat tappet camshaft. And they also had high performance, high pressure valve springs uh, to keep the valves uh, open properly and closed properly at high RPM. Uh, well those high pressure valve springs increase the pressure of that lifter to cam lobe uh, contact point. 
And so it literally grinds the oil or pushes the oil uh, film that should exist there between the camshaft lobe and the lifter. It just forces it out of there because that, that, that uh, valve spring uh, is take it takes so much pressure to open that valve because you have a high performance valve spring on there uh, that the camshaft lobe ends up pushing all the oil out between the lifter uh, and the only thing that's left then is your additive package uh, to provide that anti-wear barrier there well and now if you're not using a high dose of zinc and phosphorus in your oil you don't even have that uh, anti-wear barrier there with the zinc and phosphorus anymore so you create uh, a greatly increased wear pattern uh, on that uh, camshaft lobe and the face of that lifter which causes those components to fail uh, much sooner than they should have so several of the things that you can do uh, to help address this problem is to run a different oil and I'll go through some of the AMSOIL recommendations for their products for these cars. Uh, the very first uh, line of oils that AMSOIL recommends for this problem is the Z-Rod. Uh, ZRT and ZRF are the product codes. Uh, the ZRT is a 10W30 uh, version of this uh, oil that contains a lot of zinc and a lot of phosphorus and the Z-Rod oils also contain a very healthy dose of uh, anti-rust additives, anti-corrosion, because they know that these motors a lot of times sit around, uh, you maybe only drive them occasionally, and so water builds up through the condensation process in the crankcase, uh, and so the anti-rust and anti-corrosion additives in the oil help uh, prevent that rust and corrosion from causing problems inside your engine. And there's also the ZRF, which is the 20W50 version of that, the heavier or higher viscosity oil. Uh, so those are the two Z-Rod recommendations. Uh, Amsoil has several other recommendations that, for oils that can help address this, and they include the Premium Protection AR, or a AMO 10W40 and the ARO 20W50. Uh, along with the 5W30 heavy-duty diesel and the 15W40 um, uh, heavy-duty diesel and marine oil. Uh, one of the things you'll find is that most of your uh, diesel and marine oil still contains a lot of zinc and phosphorus, uh, at least up through the CI4 Plus oil specifications. Once you get into the CJ4 oil specifications, then the amount of zinc and phosphorus starts to drop down uh, because those diesel engines are equipped with not only a catalytic converter but many of them are also equipped with a diesel particulate filter and the zinc and phosphorus uh, additives in those oils would ca cause contamination problems with those exhaust uh, gas treatment devices as well. Uh, and then the other line of oil that AMSOIL has that still has a lot of zinc and phosphorus in it to help prevent this uh, uh, increased wear for flat tappet, flat tappet camshafts and lifters is the Dominator Racing Series oil. Uh, this oil is specifically designed for those engines that may have these flat tappet camshafts and high performance valve springs uh, along with you know heavy uh, high RPM use uh, and the Dominator Racing oil comes in four different uh, weights or viscosities. You've got 5W20 10W30, 15W50, and SAE60. So we've got a broad spectrum of oils there to help uh, your racing engines. And you can run the Dominator oil on the street uh, as long as your car is not equipped with um, modern catalytic converters uh, because it is going to provide, or it does have a lot of zinc and phosphorus in it. So it could potentially cause some problems for those catalytic converters and other exhaust gas treatment devices. So it's not recommended for those applications. So again, if you have one of these older cars, uh, you know, if you've got that old uh, Camaro or old, uh, you know, Mustang or whatever that's sitting in the garage that still has that flat tappet camshaft in it, or you have a marine engine, 
uh, you know, a lot of boat motors uh, that had inboard motors uh, still have a flat tappet camshaft in there. People forget about those. And, uh, and they still have flat tappet camshafts in many of those applications for those engines that were built in that same time period. So if you have an older boat uh, that has an inboard engine, uh, it's very high likely that, that it has got a flat tappet camshaft in it as well. And most of our boats do not have uh, catalytic converters on them, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, so if you uh, need more information or if you uh, want to get a product recommendation, uh, please contact us by going to our website at uh, www.minutemanperformance.com. Our email is info at minutemanperformance.com. We are also on Facebook at Synthetic Oil Info. Uh, just like we are here on YouTube at Synthetic Oil Info. We appreciate it if you would like us on both of those sites. And please subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Uh, that way you can be notified whenever we post a new video that may be of interest to you. Uh, please tell your friends and family about us as well. Uh, by uh, when, you, when you like us on these social sites and when you tell your friends and family about us, and they do the same thing, then it allows us to get seen by more people and we can help more people solve their oil lubrication and filtration uh, challenges and, and problems. So uh, that's it for now. Again, our website, minutemanperformance.com. Please check us out and uh, we will see you on the next video. Hope you have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.